regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. I want to remind all present that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda, including the minutes of the executive session, Board of Selectmen's meeting of July 17, 2018, as presented. Second. Discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next meeting mail. Uh, letter of resignation from the accountant, the account clerk. Deborah Saucy, the account clerk in the finance department, has resigned as of October 5th. The board would like to wish her well in her future endeavors. She will be missed. Next is a letter of resignation from the Community Preservation Committee. Karen Knox resigned from her appointment as a member of the Community Preservation Committee. The board would like to thank Karen for taking time to volunteer on, this, on the committee. It is greatly appreciated. Anyone wishing to join the Community Preservation Committee as a resident, resident member should co complete the Citizens Interest Form, which may be found on the website. I just add a, just add a comment that I think that's a great committee, an important committee, and, um, one in which a resident of the community could really add some value to how we spend our money. And I'd encourage anybody that's, uh, that's watching that would be interested in the Community Pres Preservation Committee to uh, to apply for the position. Thank you. All right. Appointments. Appointments. Next, old business. Um, Chief, this is you. We're going to talk about the um, requisition of full time civil service list. This is the third time we're talking about it. So That's okay. You Thank you for having me back. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we discussed in the past was that uh, we were looking to go to a situation where the first man out was not going to be replaced, or say the first person not be replaced. Uh, I gave you a basic uh, overview of hiring a dispatcher as well as police officers using that combination to cover those shifts. Um, I'm assuming you guys may have some questions with regards to those uh, documents that I. Currently, you, you, do we have enough part-time offices to uh, fill that full-time positions that they we, want to go up? We have time? three part-timers that just graduated the part-time academy, just completed, or well, they're in the process of completing that training, which is the road training portion of it. All three of them want it. All three of them are going to make it. So that's kind of what we're looking at. The dispatch, we would have to hire from outside. Um, we would post that on Indeed, which we've done in the past. We hired somebody about a year and a half ago. That individual's worked out well, so that's what my recommendation would be. And just, just general, two general comments. I mean, the, you know, the two things I like about this. One, we'd asked you to find a way to reduce overtime, and I think that you know you go through every every bit of this, and, and this is a plan to reduce overtime. Um, the other thing that it does do is it puts more officers on the road. Yes. Um, it, it, adds, um, it adds an officer to every shift, three shifts a day. And I think, you know, when I, when I talk to residents, and we've had a number of conversations about, you know, the police can't be everywhere and the cars are speeding up and down my street. And, and to have an extra car on the road at all times, I think, adds a lot of value. Um, this does um, this does cost us a little bit more. It doesn't cost us 
a lot more. Um, and you know, one of the questions this, this talks about for the people that aren't looking at this this memo, and the, you, you, there's a lot of detail in here, Chief. So thank, thank you for doing this. Um, I mean, this says. Uh, you know, basically a, a cost increase of seven thousand to twenty-seven thousand dollars, which is a lot of money. But but given the overall budget of the police department is is not substantial. Given the fact again that you're adding a police officer to the to the road to the force, correct, twenty-four hours a day, um, and and plus the benefit package for each officer. And I guess Brian, what, what what's that benefit package worth? You hear about twenty percent. At twenty percent yes. of the of the wages of a police officer, yep. so maybe another thirty thousand dollars, perhaps. Probably a little bit more. Than that. Depends on if it's a family plan or not. Okay. I, I the only thumbs it. that I've been using is that it's generally about at least twelve thousand. Correct. So thirty-six thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. What did I say? Thirty. Right. I try to be. Depends on family plan or not. Though. Family plans go up to eighteen thousand. So, right, so um, in, in full transparency, right, I'm not going to be able to save any money. It's going to cost a couple of dollars. Right. Mr. Paul said you definitely you have the extra officer on now with this. You're going to pay it out any, mm. anyway, so with the added officer, and like he said, with the speeding and all that, we all got that. We've all called you once or twice. Right. Twelve times. Twelve times. Okay. So it was just one road. At the last <laughs> road is a fast road. <laughs> at the last meeting, Mr. Gasper expressed concern or trepidation about um, filling the, the civilian dispatcher until it was resolved between the two unions. So I want to make sure that I bring that to your attention. Um, we need to make sure that that gets resolved prior resolved. to hiring. Absolutely. Correct. And then um, I have a meeting with AFSCME next week, and we have a meeting with the. Uh, uh, Teams Teams Teamsters later on after month. that, so we'll see if we can't get that on the agenda in I both do. cases. I don't have that date. I don't know. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yep. So, Chief, I've been through this a uh, few times yes, on my first rodeo with you on this discussion. Um, I think it's great um, trying to bring on more officers. Um, we've talked about the fatigue issues with the amount of overtime that we're um, doing. Some of our guys are doing because the younger candidates don't particularly care to do it um, and because of the way the contracts written there's some language in there that these upper seniority folks get the overtime first so it makes it kind of difficult on you um, so that's a contract thing we'll talk about some other time um, instead of open session um, I, I'm all for bringing on more offices um, for that position I, I don't see any net savings in doing this there however <coughs> there's, there's an uh, there's, there's more of expenses. It's probably anywhere cumulative between fifty and seventy thousand dollars cumulative because we're not doing that. When we did these calculations, did we factor in any of their vacation time, personal time, sick time, for those shifts to be covered as well? When we did this, or no, was that left out? The calculations that you have in front of you are the calculations that we have currently. The additional calculations are an unknown factor. Based on I'm talking about the three new offices, two weeks vacation, personal time, sick time. When we have to cover those shifts, that was that was that calculated here because that's an additional expense. I believe so. Okay, I, 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 I didn't see weren't that. covering them. Yeah. If it's if it's an hour, but if it's right. an hour, brings it down to two. Right. You would have to obviously. Well, I think yeah. Mr. Gasp was asking, did I include the extra, say, 90 days that would whatever be whatever it would come out to? Yeah, Correct. whatever whatever it would come out to. I don't I don't see that here. In the calculations, but perhaps it's there and I just missed it. Um, my next question, as um, Mr. Noble was starting to get to, but he stopped with the dispatcher was, is we're looking for three. In your last page in this pamphlet, you express that you only have three that you can grab from HRD. Yes. Okay. We're down two now. Well, we might be down two. We got a retiree going out. That's out. So now the three that we're hiring leaves us the two. Well. Uh Retiree that just left, we were proactive in the spring and we put in um, an Correct. office. So we should be even as of, I'd have to look at the date, I believe it's like mid November. Oh, okay. So, so we replaced when we did the last one. Hired. Yep. That's already reserved for the retiree you going out. hired them already. So the three, so we're only going to, if one transfers out, we're only going to be one behind. Right. So you okay. are aware that we have one that is looking to transfer out. Correct. Right. But that's okay. Well, a part of the break. The it allows us to still do two shifts this way, right? 
four, three. Yes. At minimum, right now, as long as nothing else changes, we can still do two shifts with a four, three and leave one shift at a Correct. three, three, right? And the good thing with that is, is that when you have a situation that's unexpected, rather than going directly to overtime, Correct. will have reduced our liability and it'll buy us a little bit of time. The process takes Correct. You know, almost a year for anybody right. to hire. Right. It's getting people into the So even cabins. if this if all things were equal right now hadn't followed, it would be uh, at best I would say eighteen months before this could even start to work its way into the system and start calculating. Right. Well, yes and no. So say we were able to resolve the issues between the two unions and hire the dispatcher. Mm -hmm. That dispatcher goes to the midnight shift, that shift right there alone, we're doing that, and that would be as soon as we get somebody in the door. That's roughly about the cost difference between a dispatcher and the average uh, average salary for a police officer is like $9? About $9, $10. So what if you're calculating on an overtime, you're at a much higher rate of savings. Right. So it could well, be around 25 18 if you just do the $9 difference, 25 if you're 30 if you're paying the overtime rate on those shifts it's, right. a, it's a good it's and outside. you're not going to do the you're not going to replace first person out on that shift so that would start sooner to realize all three shifts would take about 18 months mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you is there a motion to no chance of hiring more, huh? Just the three is all we have available? Because in your back page, you do make that comment that there's only three. I was hoping that maybe you could so we're calling stretch for the list. to a fourth. We're calling for the list for five part-timers. As I look at it right now, I'm hoping to get one or two. Okay. Um, right. the it's okay. We are where we're at. Might work out better this way. I know, I can explain that. Yes. Later to you. Okay. And there's something, Chief. Um, yes, sir. Uh, I need to change Article 10 vacations in the contract, and that's one of the things on the list we're discussing as part of the current negotiation. Correct. Okay. We're talking about the first person I do, out. I didn't recall that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion? I will make a motion to approve as presented. Is there a specific vote you're going to take? Hold on. Ah, there we go. So. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the requisition of the promotion of three part time officers to approve the request to hire one civilian dispatcher when that's appropriate for the 12 to 8 a.m. shift as presented. All right. A second. Second. And I'll just add the word if. 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 Yeah. When and if. Oh, when it's appropriate. When they do it, yes. Because yes. it's really, it's really, it's really a union yes. type thing, and I get, yeah. I, I, all set. All right, thank, thank you, Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Have a nice night, gentlemen. You too. You. Right. New business: the town clerk needs to post the election warrant at least seven days before the November 6, two thousand eighteen election, to notify the residents of the town. Who are qualified to vote when and where the election will be taking place. This year, all precincts will be voting at the Akushna Elementary School at 800 Middle Road. Polls will be open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, we'll make a motion to approve the November 6, 2018 state election warrant as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, senior deferral on sewer betterment portion of sewer phase two deferral. Annually, the board is asked to grant special assessment deferrals of accounts, usually seniors 65 and older, for the sewer phase two project. Before it was an application for deferral from one taxpayer, the application has been completed in a timely manner. The application is in order. The board the board must vote to. Chapter 8S 13B to grant or deny deferrals. I believe this person is every has been in every year. every year to do it. And continues to qualify continues for the rules. Qualified. Is qualified. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? 
Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the assessment referral as presented in accordance with Chapter 80, Section 13B. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Administrator's report. Yeah, I got a couple of things for you that are somewhat exciting. Uh, we did get a grant to do weatherization at the Party Ways building. Um, the Eversource is going to give us approximately $2,000 and the DOER is going to give us $20,680. Our out-of-pocket on the entire project is $650. Oh, so this is really exceptional. This comes from Jim Merritt. What, what are they going to do that you know? Um, I think, to be honest with you, we're waiting for the actual Assessment. approval of the grant. Mm -hmm. In other words, we've gotten the offer. We're, we're processing the paperwork now. As soon as we have the actual commitment in hand, I can issue the contract to do it. So, Mr. Chairman, was your question more leaning to is what are we going to, what are we doing for the twenty something? What are we going to get bucks? for the? 20? Yeah, I think that yeah. was where his question was. Oh, yeah. It's, it's in other words, what's the project? It's insulation. It's, yeah. insulation, it's uh, uh, no, no lights this time. Um, it's a new front door. Um, it's consistent with okay. obviously the yeah, exterior the green rules energy community. and um, and then of course some weather stripping and. Some new one, one or I think we got a whole bunch of windows on the side that was included in this. I mean, there's a limit. I mean, it's like twenty-three thousand, and right. only goes so far. So, but it's still, you know, hey, somebody wants to give me Cost. money, I'm in favor. Yeah. Uh, also, I wanted to make sure that I, I sort of a slightly amusing. I've been talking to you about the veterans district, and one of the things that the state uh, veterans uh, asked me was a sample agreement between what that would look like and. Mark and I wrote that up. We sent it in for their comments. What we got back was an approval. Yeah, we'll see so, yeah, so, so much for, you know, yeah. their comments. I guess they liked it. So um, that puts us down a little further on the project, and I have a call in to Mark. Because at some point, I think we need to decide whether this is something that we're going to do. I'm looking for a pro forma on costs. Um, that's the next step. Um, so the Veterans District would be a little bigger. It would have a full-time agent, part-time agent, and an administrative part-time secretary. So um, I thought maybe we'd recover office space, but no, they're going to split the time between the two town halls. And actually, our space is actually a little nicer in Akushna than theirs in Fairhaven, which surprised me. So we're working on it. Um, I've talked to Mark about what our timeline is. And I'd Mark's like the to town administrator. Mark is the town administrator Fairhaven. in uh, Fairhaven. Thank you, Mark Reese is his name. <clears throat> I'm, they still need the same as we would need to do here. Both boards have only given the town administrators a yellow light. Mm -hmm. So at some point, I need to come back and say, okay, what questions will you have and make a presentation before the board that will be equal to the one made in Fairhaven so we get an affirmative vote. If we're going to do this, I'd like to do this by January 1st. So that's the first step. Um, we are moving forward with the combination of the fire and EMS. We have engaged Labor Council and the Council to walk us through the procedures that statutorily we have to go through, meeting with the fire and EMS personnel to create an operational plan. Uh, and we'll get back to you on that. And then we meet with uh, attorneys again, and then we make a presentation to the board about what we want to do. Um, and the board decides what they want to do. Uh, also, I gave you a memo on where we are on the health insurance program. Um, I had said last year you couldn't get a better loss ratio than we had last year. We got a better ratio by nine points this year. Okay. So that's exceptional and that should make a difference to our flexibility, what we can do with the uh, health insurance. And there's a briefing, small briefing on okay. possibilities that are available do, to do us. Do they have a lower rates? Well, the interesting thing is Maya never reduces rates. Right. Um, their premise is you're in it for a collective thing, so the best you can get out of Maya usually is a zero no matter what. Yeah. But we're, we're at a historically unseen number, so I'm pushing them hard for it. We need to be the first negative. So I don't know if we'll be successful, but you know, we'll see what we can do. And that's what I have for you this evening. Any discussion? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> yeah, obviously I asked for the DPW to come in and they're not on the agenda this week. 
So something's falling through they've the asked, cracks. So. No, no, it has fallen through the cracks. They've asked yeah. to be put under the 23rd. They feel that they'll be better prepared to address the questions that you're going to ask. So the problems will be fixed. So it'll be a non-event. <laughs> well, we're well, we'll discuss what what the yeah. problem was. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen is scheduled for Tuesday, October 23rd at 5 p.m. Unless called together for emergency, a due notice will be given. Now, executive session. I move that the Board enter executive session under General Law C30A 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and litigation, wage and classification. I move that the board enter an executive session under General Law 3821A2 mm -hmm. to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, police chief, as an open meeting may be detrimental, may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body. So I declare that we will not return to public session. I need a roll call vote, Mr. Cabral. Yes. Mr. Gaspar. Yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you.